Okay, so we're we're busy at training, mate. How long have you been doing this? I mean, how long has the, has the squad been back to, uh, back uh, together for? Uh, well, we started our preseason in even November, I think, wow. uh, for about three and a half weeks, and then had a three week break over Christmas, which was awesome, and got back on the ninth of Jan. So. A few weeks, boys are hanging out the place in rugby. Yeah, I was going to look. I was watching the Warriors play their preseason last night, and I was thinking it can't be long before we're actually doing this for 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 rugby. When's the, when's the first preseason? We've got a game tomorrow. Brilliant. Uh, we're going up to play, play Auckland uh, or the Blues. Yep. Uh, tomorrow up there, and then we've got Crusaders following Friday down in Levin. So um, yeah, it's all going now. What do you look for in the preseason, mate? Uh, well, I think the, the idea is you know some teams have the All Blacks and that out and. Um, but I think the, with the preseason that we've had, and we've had a few weeks of it, it's, it's how much they can put our system and what we've done on both sides of the ball, uh, how much of that they can actually put out onto the field, and then also is evaluating the boys and seeing how they how they come through the, the the physical contact in the game and who's really playing better. And um, so when you get to round one, uh, ideally some of the rugby's in there, and so you're not having to start all over again yep. before the season starts yep. and you can get some healthy bodies and guys actually feeling good uh, getting out of those preseason games because to be fair as a someone that played the game I hated preseason games because I just wanted to get to the real thing so you don't want guys going in there and getting injured and um, but I've got to have their mind right uh, which, which will help as a coach to say yep this guy's really round one it's tough though, Corey, isn't it? Because at the same time, you don't want to get injured, but you can't play thinking like that though, can you? No, you can't. And that's why I guess it's important that these guys go up there and, uh, and, and perform well. Because a lot of them want to, obviously some of them will probably start anyway because they've been around for a long time and you know, decent rugby players. So their mindset is, I'm probably already starting. But if you go with that, that attitude that I'm just going to cruise and then you get a couple of these young guys coming in and having an absolute blinder. And I know it's only pre-season. Um, you know, it can start sweating a, a choice on who's, who's going to be playing that, that first round. So, um, yeah, it's important that you go with the right mindset because you don't want to get injured, but also you don't want to have you know, average games and look like you're well off the pace because that will hurt you as well. So as far as your coaches go, do you have in mind a 15 or a 23 that you would like to start the first round with? Uh, well, no, I don't don't think anything's set, set in stone. There's, there's guys that you think, well, I'll put them down on the list here, and uh, hopefully you can put a little bit of combinations in, the, you know, in a couple of preseason games and see how this person works with that person. And, um, you know, you're obviously, when you look at it, you know, your Arties and your Geordies and stuff probably already on set in stone. But um, you know, it's just about in the combinations and and seeing who works well for each other, and hopefully not too many of the guys shit the bed. <laughs> and uh, you can get to round one and, and go well, you know? I'm looking at guys like Asafo and just thinking, um, you know, what he has to gain this year and, you know, the potential of that guy. I mean, you've got a couple of players in that squad who are fringe on the All Blacks, but who knows what injuries are going to happen with the World Cup this year. There's so much to play for. Yeah, and I obviously with Saf, so I don't know what goes on in the All Blacks, but many trains his ass off when he's with us. And uh, like I said, it could be different in the, the ABs. But when he's here, you get into, and I know from the as I did, you get into some tackle drills, and he's 100% every single time. And he kind of makes everyone around him have to get to that level. Otherwise, um, being the ball of muscle he is, he's going to hurt someone. So just that kind of stuff rubs off on everyone around him. Um, but like I said, it's a it's a big opportunity for, I guess, the All Black guys this year as well because they. Uh, you know, they've got the World Cup coming and, uh, you know, what happened last year with the All Blacks and it was, you know, so-so year that they want to play well. And, you know, the best way to do that is play well in Super Rugby. Um, and then the rest of the guys still want to make the World Cup on the fringe. So they've got to play well. So it's going to be awesome for Super Rugby, not just for the Hurricanes, but I think all teams in New Zealand that ideally you're getting everyone that really wants to push to become an All Black um, and, and they'll go out there and perform well. Corey Jane, Upper Hutt's finest export to Hurricanes legend and also won a World Cup for us, remember, as part of the bomb squad in 2011. It's so good, you know, 
you know, you must actually feel great about the idea that you've had this experience. You can impart this wisdom to the players just from a really practical point of view of saying, hey, look, that's the carrot at the end of the year or whatever. But listen, there's all of these hurdles that have got to overcome. And if you think too far ahead, you're not going to get to that point anyway. Is that the kind of advice you give them? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, when I first started out uh, being a coach, obviously I, I enjoy the game. And, and, you know, I just, I think one major driver for me is I wanted the boys to, know what it felt like to try to get to the top and with rugby here in New Zealand you know, obviously that's the All Blacks and being professional rugby and I just wanted the boys to enjoy it you know and get to that to that moment like I did and I said I've experienced it and I absolutely loved it becoming an All Black and that was my dream and so whatever knowledge or help I can share with these guys and coach them to try to get better and understand the game and see the game in a different way so then you know halfway through at the end of their career they can sit there and go I actually got to the top and it was awesome, like you said. So I think that's a big driving part uh, for me as well. And everyone to just fulfill their potential and enjoy it. I want to finish on Dane Coles, mate. Um, you know, I just, I mean, what do you say about this guy? You, as a fan, you love him. Everything about him. If you know, if you, I, I always think, you know, he's one of those guys. You're the same, mate. That when we're sitting there on the couch, I think, God, if I played, I wanted to be that guy because he just, he's a fan as much as he is a player. And I just can't speak highly enough of him. Just watching him play for my teams, and that's all my teams, mate. I love him. Mate, he is awesome, and he's, he's been so good in this preseason, especially the month we've just had after Christmas, like. He looks like a 21-year-old. He's flying around everyone. We have to tell him to calm down because he's just trying to get into everything. And, um, you know, he's had some, some tough injuries that are getting frustrated, him, but he's had an outstanding career. And you look at different players throughout eternity that have played in, in sports, and especially if we look at rugby, now he changed the way that the hooker played. I yep. mean, yeah, yep. of course, it's Patrick every now and then standing out wide scoring tries, but just how dynamic he was as a hooker around the field and then it kind of changed the mould that everyone started to try to look for a hooker that could do that and so when you look at him he's tough he's energetic he's he's old but you know he's still flying around the field changed the game and he still loves it so it's and it's, it's sad to see him retire everyone has to do it but um it's going to be a great year for him, hopefully. Yeah, I just like also, I like the niggle he brings. I like the the, the, the chat he brings and everything else. You've got to have somebody on the team that does that, don't you? You've got to have somebody that's actually prepared to get under the skin. And what we saw with Argentina last year with Matero not wanting to shake his hands and that was just brilliant to me. I said, I want one player in my team to be doing this. Yeah, and he's, he, do, he does it at training too. Like, <laughs> just, just doesn't stop. <laughs> he's just always got to lip away. I think he lipped away at something, something happened off a mall yesterday and he was screaming and yelling and trying to niggle away and man it's awesome because it gets the guys around you fired up and you know g'd up and wanting to get in there as well and um you know he's he kind of does it every five seconds in a game so he might get in trouble a bit more this year if that keeps going that way and you know, he's pretty probably lucky that no one punched him to be fair <laughs> if he was playing in the 90s and yeah. 80s yeah he'd probably be gone but um yeah I mean, he, he just loves it and that's I guess when you see him do that, you know that he's actually loving the game. Um, was he a great dude to good. play with, just as a teammate and a mate? Yeah, I, I just he's tough. And again, he's you know he changed the way the rugby was, and he's now he's you know he's a bit older and wiser and on how the game goes. But back then, I remember I think it was his debut for the Lions back in a long time ago, and he ran like a penetrating fullback line out on the edge and just ran through the line uh, 40 metres out and scored under the post and I was just like holy moly this, that was what a full bit did um, so just that kind of stuff and that's cosy and uh, like I said it's, everyone's got to retire but we've just got to try to send them away on a on a good note this year and, and say what a great career you've had and let's try and win a championship for you always a pleasure talking to you catching up with you dude thanks so much for that appreciate it uh, anytime